The i3 is the third best selling electric vehicle. You should have probably called it the i1 and they'd be doing loads better. Hello car friends. Okay, so today I thought to try something a little bit different. So we're going to go and try the BMW i3. But I've got a one extra twist. Drive now, which is essentially an app where you can click and get a car whenever you want and it'll just be there and you just go and collect it and then when you're done and you're finished with it, you're going to drop it off. So you don't even need to own a car go on this side now. Okay, so I've got this, which is the app. So as you can see, uh, there's one really close to me. I'm going to click reserve. Perfect, so now I've got the car. Aha! Unlock car. Amazing. So I'm now in the BMW i3, um, so just asking me to log in. So I'm gonna click the middle button on the center console, which has got quite a lot of um, the, the sort of AV and the media type things, as well as the sort of eco settings as well. Now this car in particular is about 39 pence a minute. So my first impressions of this, oh, it's really spacious. So actually for a city car, they're normally sort of a little bit uh, a little bit tight. Simply, everything sort of from a drive perspective is on this stalk here. Press the start stop button that's on there stuff's happened the pedals just gone back with the accelerator in electric cars because this is a single drivetrain electric car when you accelerate obviously accelerates uh, when you take your foot off the accelerator, it starts braking wow it's quiet okay so like every electric car super super quiet probably not got that kick that the tesla's got but you know what do you expect i think this is sort of just above thirty thousand pounds the tesla sort of starts from i believe about fifty sixty thousand Okay, so I just tried to floor it for a little bit. It's actually got a 0 to 60 speed, or not 62, I think it is, of 7.1 seconds. So it's actually quite quick for a little city car. It's got 170 brake horsepower. And I've just come to stop and I've not touched the brake at all. So all on the accelerator there. From a 0 to 100% charge, you tend to get between 81 and 100 miles on this. For every one car club car they put into the network, it takes 10 cars off. This will charge roughly in about, you know, three hours from 0 to 80%. I think you can also get a BMW, I think it's a wall charger. When I put it out on Twitter the other day, a lot of BMW i3 owners, it's an option that they tend to go for. BMW do sell a range extender, affectionately known in the i3 community as the Rex range extender, which will give you a sort of an extra 100 miles I guess I think it takes you about up to 200 miles and to top that up is about nine pound of fuel it's basically a generator that sort of recharges the battery so right now I've got this on comfort mode it's the one that gets you to speed the quickest so you can push that down that takes you into comfort push it down one more it takes you to eco pro so eco pro gives about an extra 12 percent to your range so, you know around 105 112 miles the next one down adds 25 percent if you put it into eco pro you can't really take it on the motorway so you, you know that's 56 miles maximum per hour that you're allowed to go in eco pro i have to remember not to brake because when i brake it's double braking so it's like basically where are you going Okay, so maybe you do need to brake if you're driving on that guy. What BMW have done is uh, made the body um, from like a carbon fibre reinforced plastic, which makes it super, super light. And that's actually how you manage to get these coach doors. And there's double coach doors with no B pillar down the middle. That's all because it's super light plastic. I asked my girlfriend yesterday, what's the point in having these double coach doors? The best use case that she could come up with, you know when you're in a service station, you are a parent and you're passing food back to your kids rather than letting the crumbs come through the car you can open both doors and just pass it round to them if that's not a reason to buy a thirty thousand pound car i don't know what is right i'm gonna have to put my scarf back on when you turn it into eco pro plus because it puts the heat in onto an economical mode as well it doesn't basically surprise but provide much heat whatsoever so it's actually quite cold there's a lot more plastic what is this this is like this is made out of chipboard it's probably not made of chipboard but it's definitely used of like a recycled material like the whole of this dash is made from paper mache i feel like there's a kid at school that just did really well at paper mache and was like i'll be like a paper mache king and knife that is my job and bmw went actually we've got a paper mache job going i couldn't put water on that because it would just go this is a well thought out car in terms of its actual layout everything's very accessible and feels sort of quite solid from uh from the bits that you, you need it's just the rest of the trim which um 
is made out of paper mache. So the average UK car owner, believe it or not, spends around £5,000 a year on owning a car. Now that's a combination of fuel into your car, wash your car, your car depreciates significantly, finance on top of that if that's the arrangement that you've got, tax, if you're anything like me you have to pay to have your car outside of your home, service and MOTs. At the moment car sharing is the way for me. And now I'm in the congestion charging zone in London but again I don't have to pay a penny. One up to the establishment is what it feels like. Because I'm using drive now you literally take the car, leave it wherever it needs to be left and that's it. If that's in a visitor parking bay, if that's in resident parking bay, just put it into parking mode, the car will be under my reservation. So no one else is gonna come along and get that car and I don't have to pay for parking. So surely that's cheaper, especially in London where it's like one pound for seven minutes. It is still quite punchy even in the economical mode. It's really uh, responsive, tiny bit of lag, but feels nippy. You're, you're quite high up in your seat. So the, the center of gravity in these is really, really low because they put the batteries at the bottom. Okay, it's actually really short at the back and really quite long at the front. You're actually in the middle of the car when you drive, uh, which I guess is great for 50-50 weight distribution, which this car has got. But nothing stops you panicking when you get those little bollards that look like threading a needle and you think there's no way I'm going to get this car through that tiny, tiny chess piece sized bollard that you've got there, it's ridiculous. I guess that asks two questions. One, would I buy a BMW i3? And second, could I not own a car? The BMW i3 one will answer first. The i3 is the third best selling electric vehicle in production. I should have probably called it the i1 and they'd be doing loads better. As an electric vehicle, it is great and it's great for a city run around. It's got enough features to make it feel like it's worth £30,000 um, without necessarily feeling too luxurious. Ironically, there's a silver Cayman Mark II Cayman just to the side of me here. That's a car that I used to have and it's about the same price second hand as this car here. And would I buy a second hand Cayman or, or a brand new i3? I think I would go for the Cayman. That said, the Cayman is not going to be great at getting me to the shop. So this really does have a purpose. And if that's your use case and that's what you want, then there's no reason why you would look any further than the i3. Uh, so the second question, would I get rid of my car completely and, and continue using car share clubs? Now this actually ties straight back into the first question because if I was going to get a BMW i3 or a city runaround car, I wouldn't buy the i3, I would use drive now i wish the the councils and some of the sort of boroughs would be a little bit as more forward thinking uh, because you can connect the boroughs up and actually do more of this and at the moment i get the feeling there's not enough boroughs on board to sort of make it as to make the most use of that technology which i think is a shame if i was going to get a, a city run around i would i would absolutely use car sharing and not buy a car Right, okay, so I've just gotten out of the i3 and then all I now need to do is quickly uh, lock the car and tell it that that's ended. Click lock car. There you go, so that's done. Brilliant, okay, that was the BMW i3. Uh, I've been Craig Neal, you can get me at Craig Neal. Um, other than that, I will see you next week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe with the link in the bio down below. See you next week.